Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the uh, Nightcore T4K, which is a very interesting little tiny light. But first off, before I go any further, I want to thank uh, Nightcore themselves for sending this guy along. They reached out to me as they have before and said, Nick, we're, uh, we just got this new release. Is this something you're interested in? I told them as always, yeah, sure, but I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They still did send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the absolute best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature and quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison here. I mean, to start with, uh, you know, one relevant point of comparison would be sort of your conventional batteries. So right here it is against a, a AA battery, um, just sort of your generalized AA. Um, here it is against... Uh, this is a 21700 uh, Stiz battery, which is maybe a little bigger than a lot of folks are used to. And then here it is against an 18650 battery, uh, which is, uh, yeah, there you go. So what we see here is this is not particularly large, but it's also, uh, well, it's a reasonably beefy light. And we can put it on the side and we see that it is roughly squarish. Not exactly square, but roughly. Here it is against the Nightcore Tip SE, which is another reasonable light choice um, for your everyday life. Um, and here it is against the Nightcore Tiny, as well as here it is against the Thrunite Neutron, uh, which is one of my uh, very favorite and very, very recommended uh, daily flashlights here. Um, and so there is that. And then finally, actually, I'll put it up against its big brother right here, which is the uh, 10,000 Lumens uh, TM10K from Nightcore. This is in many ways a, a, a much small and reduced in size, I suppose, is the verb, uh, version of that guy. So, um, there you go. And then finally, uh, one other thing that's worth noting here is that all of the lumen specs I'm going to give are according to Nightcore. I do not have the, uh, the, the, the ability to do that kind of testing of lumen output because that is a pain in the neck. But anyways, um, so there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting, very small little light here. So to start with, one thing that's kind of nice about this guy is the clip on it. Um, the clip is good. Um, it's got plenty of, you know, grip for it. It's very easy to slip onto a belt or something like that, as well as onto a pocket loop. But one thing about the way that this is oriented is that you can actually put this guy on the brim of a hat, either on the bottom or on the top, and you end up with an impromptu headlamp, um, which is actually not a bad idea, right? Having a clip that can go in this direction uh, can actually be quite useful um, for that. And it's small enough and relatively light enough that you can do that, uh, which I appreciate. And actually, let me go ahead and weigh the guy up for you real quick as we're thinking about it. Coming at 2.68 ounces, which is not so bad. Um, so there is that. Next thing, this guy has a quick release lanyard thing on the back of it here. Now, I'm generally not a lanyard person, and this light is no exception, but this does kind of have the neat advantage of it's got this little guy right here with a uh, little round button. Press that button in, and the uh, lanyard pops off, and again, if you press it on again. Um, one thing that's worth noting is that you do have to press the button to snap it back in place, um, which is not the end of the world, but it's definitely a thing. And you are probably going to want to remove this as you are charging the light, although some USB-C will be able to get in there and charge it there. And actually, uh, while we're at it, uh, one thing that's worth noting is that this is um, a uh, chargeable sort of thing. This takes a USB charger, um, a USB-C more specifically, um, which is nice. And this actually takes any USB-C thing. It respects different charging standards. You can hook this up to a USB-C power delivery version. I can hook this up to pretty much any USB-C and it's going to work just fine. And so I appreciate that very much. I think it's a uh, it's well done in that regard. Um, so that's good. Next thing, um, this guy does have a nice little display on it. Um, as you can see here, when it is running, what you're going to see is that it shows the current runtime, basically. Uh, right now, I have two hours and 33 minutes remaining on this setting. If I reduce the setting down to one lumen, I've got 57 hours. If I go to two lumen, or um, setting two, that is 15 lumens, I've got 18 hours, etc. Um, and so this gives you a really nice estimation of how long of a runtime you got left, as well as your current charge level. Because if I just hit this button while it's, uh, while it's not turned on, I can see here that my charge level is largely good, which is very nice. Um, one of the nice things about this form factor is that it does not roll. Unlike a lot of flashlights, especially the round cylinder types, the tendency to roll away a little bit. Um, this guy you can set down on something and be pretty sure it'll stay where it is. So that's good. Ah, sorry. Next thing, moving on, um, we have ourselves a decent interface here. Um, what I mean by that is that the way that this works is there's a button down here, and when you press that button, it turns the light on. When you press the one above it, it uh, changes the, uh, the, 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 the basically the amount of light. Um, and so by doing that, we cycle through our modes, right? And then if you want to hold down this top button, you can either do that while the light is on, uh, or you can do that while the light is off. 
Uh, but either way, you can go into the turbo mode directly, which is your 4,000 lumen output, which is pretty impressive, right? And then it does actually have one thing I've been asking for for a while from Nightcore, which is a lockout mode. So right now I've just put the, the, the light into lockout mode. And that means I cannot turn the light on uh, just by hitting the buttons. What I can do is in this lockout mode, I can hold down that second button and get turbo for a limited amount of time. But in order to do this, uh, let's see here, what is it to unlock it? There we go. In order to do that, you need to double click it and then do that. And there is also a lockout mode that if I keep holding this, it goes into lockout number two, where even the turbo button doesn't work. So this is completely until you do the magical uh, double click and then hold it down thing. Now it's unlocked again. So um, I like the fact that they've put a lockout mode in there. That has been one of my biggest complaints on the tip line forever, and it's good to see that here. Um, and so uh, th th that's good. And the next thing, um, this has a very nice beam pattern. It's kind of hard to show this off on camera, but what you see is there's a little bit of spot in the center here, but there's actually a fair amount of flood to it, which makes this, I think, a very nice EDC sort of uh, friendly compromise, right? The super spotty lights that, you know, let you see something a half a mile away, they can be useful for some tasks, but for most people in your day, life, you want to be illuminating the rough area, right? And so I think this has done a really nice job of balancing that beam pattern for daily life. And then finally, on the good side, this guy has serious output. Um, as we see here, there are different levels. There are four default levels, and that's one lumen for 60 hours of runtime, 15 lumens for about 20 hours of runtime. And again, the light isn't fully charged at the moment, which is why those numbers are disagreeing. 65 lumens for seven hours of runtime, and uh, 200 lumens for about two hours, uh, uh, 0.75, two hours, 45 minutes or so. And for what it's worth, the 65 is more than enough to navigate a dark room comfortably, and 200 lumens is fine for outdoor use in a lot of cases, right? And then you do have the turbo mode, the 4,000 lumens, if you hold this down. But the thing is, turbo has a very limited timer here. And even as I'm running this, this is heating right up, right? Um, And this lights up things uncomfortably. Um, You see right there, it just dialed back down to the 200 mode. Um, And so, be, for thermal reasons, frankly. But the thing is, the 4,000 is very good to send a message, right? Um, th This is actually, you know, there is a plausible use for a flashlight in a self-defense context of somebody's being sketchy, you know, pointing 4,000 lumens directly at their face is going to certainly uh, surprise them at the very least and probably make them think, hmm, this is weird. I'm I'm out. Why is this person carrying a flashlight? Dude, what the heck? Um, and so they, they, again, you know, they, 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 that approach is to freak and run, but still, is that, or it's also good for signaling um, or for looking around in kind of a more searchy sort of situation. I'm a, a situation, uh... So anyways, um, the, the output on this is very good, though. You've got very low outputs for very long times. You've got moderate outputs, which are perfectly fine. And you've got a serious output for serious moments. So that's a great thing. And to me, all of that is the good is that it's got really good output. It's nice and easy to charge with USB-C. Got a great beam pattern, decent interface. It's got that display, which is kind of nice. Um, it's got a quick release lanyard thing, which, by the way, can be removed and just have a regular lanyard if that's your uh, style. And then uh, the clip on this guy can form an impromptu headlamp with the uh, brim of a hat. So um, there is that. On the great side to me, this guy is a tiny light, all things considered, but it has a huge output. This is relatively easy to carry. It's relatively easy to store. It's a little bit on the thicker side, right? It's going to be thicker than a lot of the, you know, the stuff you might, spider. Delica size comparison. It's a little bit thicker than a lot of the stuff you might carry in your pocket generally, but it's not hard to toss this guy in a pocket, right? Um, and, and, you know, I've done that on a couple of occasions, going out for a walk in the evening, just toss this in there, right? And it's easy enough that it, it, it's carry, easy to carry, easy to store, etc. But when you need that light, oh, it's there. And so this is just another really nice example of this candy bar style light. It is doing really great work, right? I've been very, very impressed with these lately. So to me, that's what's great here, is this is a tiny light, but with absolutely huge output, making this guy uh, just pound for pound. This is, this is a pocket rocket, so to speak. This is a very impressive little knife. Uh, knife, wow, light. Until I've just been reviewing knives. Anyways, um, let's talk about the bad. And on the bad side, to start with, it is a little pricey, right? We're looking at $90 for this little guy right here. That's a lot of money. And considering that you can get a lot of really nice everyday carry lights in the $40, $30 uh, dollar range, um, that, that, that's a bunch of stuff. Um, this is something where you are really paying for that high-end performance. You are paying for that turbo mode to be a thing because you can get lights that are very similar, like the Nightcore Tip, given as a little bit less runtime, and the interface isn't quite 
quite as good, missing the lockout thing, but you can get a lot less light for a lot, or I'm sorry, not that much less light for a lot less money. And so um, you're definitely paying for this form factor and you're paying for that high bursty sort of mode. Next thing, the color of the light isn't amazing. It's not as bad as some, but it is very much in sort of that cool white sort of view. Um, it doesn't have quite as nice of a, a chromatic sort of thing. I would love to see something with uh, like a Nichia emitter in here that would really give you a daylight sort of light. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. Okay, whatever. Next thing, this guy is a relatively thick light, and as you are carrying this, especially in your pocket, the crystal on this guy is exposed. I get it. I get why they oriented the clip this way for the headlamp thing, but that is definitely something to consider. This is going to be sitting at the top of your pocket relatively thickly, um, and it's going to be not so different in terms of thickness from your conventional 18650 lights. So, um, although it is definitely small on this dimension, don't make the mistake of thinking it's super small on this one. It is still a bit of a thick boy. And then, um, the next thing, this does not have the most staying power, so to speak. Um, you get not quite three hours of pretty outdoor capable light at the 200 lumen level, right? This is a very good amount of light. This is a solid output, but it's only going to do that for a little, a little less than three hours, right? This is much more of a, in case it gets dark and I need to see something light, than it is a, okay, off to the night shift sort of life, uh, night that is night. Wow. I mean, a night light is a night, right? Uh, anyways, I digress. It's been a really long day, people. It really is. But anyways, um, this is going to be much more than your average kind of backup light. It's going to be much more than some of the other little dudes around. Like, this is the uh, Nightcore Tiny over here, which actually manages the same 200 lumens, but it does it for about 45 minutes, um, as opposed to three hours. But still, um, you are definitely not getting a whole bunch of staying power here. The other thing that makes that, uh, that changes the calculus calculus a little bit is that you are going to not be able to swap out the battery because the battery is non-replaceable. Unlike in sort of a more conventional light, like for instance, this little guy right here is the Night Core, or I'm sorry, the Through Night uh, T2. Um, and it's a, another fine little everyday carry light. But on this guy, if you have a couple of those batteries, you can swap the battery out at midnight, right? You know, if you, you start running low on juice, you just swap in a new battery and you're good to go. And then overnight, you charge both batteries. Um, well, I guess it'd be during the daytime if you're carrying this overnight. Anyways, I digress. With this guy, once it's out, it's sort of out. You have to recharge it entirely. And given recharging, it ain't so hard with a USB-C thing, but that's definitely a bit of a problem, right? You can't get 12 hours out of this guy by bringing three batteries, whereas you can with a more conventional light. The other issue with a non-replaceable battery is that there is an element of planned obsolescence in here, right? Um, this battery will fade, as all batteries do. That is the nature of batteries. They do not work forever. And as a result, this light has sort of a limited lifespan relative to something that is a little bit more, well, frankly, dumb, uh, that, that just has... Uh, the the battery and the emitter and whatnot. Um, so you can swap the battery out, but on this guy, you can't. Um, and so that's definitely a reduction in flexibility. And uh, it's just, yeah, that's one of the main remaining advantages of the cylinder style lights. They tend to take standard batteries that you can get, you can swap, and th 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 there's a lot of joy in that. So um, there is that. Next thing, this guy has a fair amount of complexity built into it. This is something I've talked about a little bit before, and this is one of the areas that, um, you know, Jason Hoy of Prometheus Lights has, has thought about this a lot and it has a really good take on it, which is that every time you build something into the core of the light, you're adding a point of potential failure. And with a conventional light that is literally just a, a, an emitter and a switch attached to a battery, um, th th there's not that much to go wrong. The battery charging is elsewhere, the, you know, whereas on something like this, where the battery charger is built in, the electronics to control the thing is built in, um, all of the, the battery itself is built in, you've got a lot of points of failure here. And so this is definitely a light that is absolutely fine for my daily life, right? If my light fails, oh no, not the end of the world. But if I were going off on expedition, that is something that I'd have to think about a little bit more, right? And so that, that added complexity is definitely problematic. Then finally on the bad side, the settings here are, are, are nice, and I think they've done a reasonable job picking them, but there's very little gradients. What I mean by that is it's not really possible to uh, get an intermediate level of light. You've kind of got your four main levels plus the turbo there. And that is something I definitely miss relative to lights which have, you know, kind of a continuous, uh, in this case, it's getting brighter, 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 and then at a certain point it'll stop and it'll get 
a little bit. Yeah, so that's not amazing, particularly. Um, I'd like to see an option to have the, the light ramp up rather than being just a one, two, three, four. It's also a little bit more battery efficient. So to me, at least all that's the bad is that there's very little gradients here. There's a fair amount of complexity built into the unit itself. Um, there's a non-replaceable battery, which raises concerns both for planned obsolescence or maybe not even planned, just obsolescence. Um, and also the fact that you can't swap it out. It, this doesn't have all that much stay in power. It's relatively thick. The color of the light isn't amazing, but it could definitely be worse. And for 90 bucks, this is running a little bit pricey. There's nothing particularly ugly here. Um, there are enough advantages in the form factor to doing that built-in battery that I'm not willing to call it ugly here. But boy, would I love to see a standard emerge that would allow you to replace those guys down the road. Final conclusion, though... Honestly, this is a great little light. I mean, carrying this around, using this guy, um, it, there's a lot to like about it because it's got a nice clip. It's got a, the, the little lanyard thing. It's kind of cool, right? It's got a helpful display, a good interface, um, nice beam pattern, easy, easy charging with multiple different kinds of USB-C compatibility. Um, it's got serious output and a form factor that is very small but with a lot of light coming out of it. It is pricey. The color is kind of middle of the road. The light is a little bit thick. It's not running all night long. The battery is not replaceable. There is a bunch of complexity here, and there's very little gradients in the output, but overall, I have liked it a good bit. And I feel like it is kind of a nice compromise between something like the Tip SE and Nightcore's line, which is a really nice light, and it throws out a surprising amount of light for the, the size and shape of it there, but for relatively low run times, and with relatively little, I mean, it's still got the USB charging in there, but with relatively little, you know, feature friendliness. I don't know how long I've got run time on this guy when I started up, but it's a nice place in the middle between this guy and, for instance, the TM10K. 10,000 lumens, uh, which is a very, very serious light um, and is much, much bigger than this guy is. It also happens to need to be charged very badly. So I think it kind of fits into that intermediate level pretty well. Um, and it's also a little bit nicer in the pocket, I feel like, than some of your full-size 18650 lights. Mind you, some of the other ones are not necessarily that big. Let me grab another one off the table here. This is the um, the Lumen Top, I believe, FW4A. Um, and this is another, uh, this, by the way, has a much nicer color temperature as well as a ramping interface. But this is a, uh, a re reasonably compact 18650 light, but there just aren't that many things that are going to carry as well as this little guy in the 18650 form factor. It's also very easy to recharge with the... Uh, there's a lot of joy to say here. Um, this is going to be in that nice area where it is sort of enough for most situations, lighting-wise, but it's not going to be quite such overkill if all you're doing is going for a walk or something like that. So I think it is a really nice choice. The question, though, for me, comes in the price and the complexity, right? This is a very pricey light, and you really want to have... The, the, your goal for this money must be to find the smallest... Uh, container for 4,000 lumens over a very small period of time, uh, of course, to go this route. That's the thing that would make this guy particularly appealing, because there were much cheaper lights in a bunch of different form factors with practically similar outputs in terms of, you know, uh, middle of the road, not turbo versions, um, and with improved uh, run times as well as the ability to swap batteries and things like that. So that's definitely a factor. If you just want a light for normal situations, Honestly, I don't know that I'd send you here first, right? This is sort of a, a fancy light, um, and there are a lot of lights that are much less fancy that you might consider as well. Um, it's also quite the, the, the affair in terms of complexity. Like I said, with the charging, with the batteries, with the display, all of that makes this guy a little bit complicated, and that might not be the thing I would recommend to somebody who just wants a simple tool that'll last them for years, right? Um, I don't know that that's going to be the case with something as complex as this. Ultimately, I think that this is kind of a pocket rocket style light, right? This is a bit of a showy flashlight. This is a thing that you have and people are like, oh my God, look at the freaking, the, the, the output of this thing is absurd, right? That's the kind of reason you would do something like that, right? Um, it is a way to get a ridiculous amount of power out of a tiny form factor. And you know what? It's a fine little daily light to boot. So if you want that power and you don't mind the price or the complexity, then I think this little guy could absolutely light up your life. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting. Sorry I didn't film this in 4K and uh, have you just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.